Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman, and I'm pretty sure I'm on the right page. I hope so. Um, I was looking tonight. I'm very plain today. I took my uh, bath, washed my hair, and I forgot to put conditioner in my hair. I'm just now remembering, actually, so it's kind of frizzy. <laughs> but Chris came home this evening, and so he got home late. I made supper late, and so I'm getting started a little late. But I'm here, so I'm glad y'all are tuning in tonight. And I am plain Jane to me, but I'm but I'm nice and uh clean because <laughs> I uh had my bath and had to you know fix my hair and all before Chris got home. I've been taking it easy with him gone. I told him earlier. I said, "Honey, I missed you, but you've got the Braves playing and a video playing at the same time." And then he was asking me questions, and I was like, oh, I enjoyed the peace and quiet for a couple of days, although I did miss him. So I've been in a much better mood since he's been home. But I had to spend a little bit of time with him before I came on with you guys, so we didn't make it to church tonight. Um, I didn't cook supper until right about 7 o'clock. I made, um, we had rice left over from last night. So I did some rice stir fry in the wok because Amy does not like the little potatoes that you roast in the air fryer. I made those for me and Chris, and so Amy don't like those, so I made her just a fried rice for her starch, and then we had Brussels sprouts, and I made salmon, and then I made her and made a piece of chicken. So it was a healthy supper. And I've ate my ice cream today. Y'all know I'm in love with that. Um, I told y'all about it. It's um, mocha almond fudge. Had to have my little cup today already. Today, we are going to read about giving and receiving from God. And it's so uh, funny because when you look it up in the scripture, that's just a small part of what he's talking about. So, um... So, I'm going to read the Bible study, and then we'll read the scripture, okay? But, and now I'll read the scripture to start the Bible study, just the one verse. And it says, give and receive. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. And this comes out of Luke chapter 6, verse 38, if y'all want to look it up. That's Luke chapter 6, verse 38. It says, when God makes you aware of a need, it is because he's inviting you to take part in his supernatural work. His opportunities to, his opportunities to give are like train tracks through which he sends you blessings you get on board with him by doing as he asks, and that creates the path by which you see his provision and join in his victory. It says, we see this with David when he invited the people of Israel to contribute to the building of the temple. David wanted them to experience the overflowing joy of seeing God do a mighty work through them. But first, it would require them to trust the Father more than their own resources and make the sacrifices he directed. If they clung to their possessions instead of to him, they would miss the blessing. Likewise, when God calls you to give your resources, you must pour them out as an offering and embrace those great assignments out of obedience to him. Then you will see him work supernaturally through your gift and supply all that you are lacking. This is out of Charles Stanley's Jesus, Our Perfect Hope Bible Study on today. It's reading us July the 24th, and that comes out of Luke 6.38. And I'm sure that many of us remember times when God whispered in our ear, you know that God don't audibly whisper in our ear, but y'all know what I'm talking about. 
the Holy Spirit lays it on your heart to help somebody or um, give somebody some money or um, give to somebody just like they have these. Um, I don't see them as often as I used to, but they used to have a lot of posts on Facebook where you would give to people in need, you know. And um, so we've all been there and whether or not we follow in obedience um, is up to us because God don't make us do it, but he does ask us to do it. Boy, my, my glasses are shining like crazy in this thing, aren't they? These are new glasses. Let me turn them down like that. <laughs> and that way they don't glimmer so. I know I look crazy, but y'all don't care. Anyway, um, so if we follow him, then sometimes we do get a, a big blessing. You know, a lot of people will say that there's more blessing out of giving than there is receiving. And I believe that. Um, I know a lot of y'all, I, I, I don't know why it just popped into my mind. A lot of y'all have actually sent me notes and cards and stuff like that in times when I needed them the most. And um, and I thank you for that. I really need to go back and look at the cards that y'all sent me and, and, and mention thanking y'all for when Mama passed away because I don't even think I ever done that. Gosh, everything was so crazy right then. When all that happened, my sister was moving home, my mom passed away, May was graduating, going to, they were going to the prom. I mean, it was just crazy. So um, my life now over the last two weeks has been so different, calmed down. There's nothing huge going on, and um, it has been a blessing. I got the same shirt I had on uh, two nights ago, y'all. Sorry, but I didn't change for y'all. Now, I haven't been wearing this for two nights, but I wear sleeveless shirts most of the time because I am in menopause, and most of the time I'm burning up, and I very rarely have sleeves on. But enough of all of that. Let's get back to Bible study, right? Um, the, the part that this is actually taken out of in Luke is a, a section in Luke chapter 6 called Do Not Judge. And this is actually in a section that's telling us not to judge when they're talking about giving. But he's actually talking about several things that's good for us in this section. And I'm just going to start because um, our verse was 38, but I'm going to start with 37 so that we can take this into the context, okay? It says, judge not and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Then he speaks a parable. And he talks about um, several things in the parable. And um, first thing I'll talk about are these two first things. Judge not and you shall not be judged. Now, I'm going to throw this out there because many people throw out that verse all the time about the judgment on everything and everybody. And let me just say this. Um... We're really not supposed to judge others. And when I when I read this parable, it talks about the brother having a speck in his eye and how you can have a speck in your own eye and you need to get that out first before you start thinking about your brothers. Um, and he calls them a hypocrite. Um, but there are times, there are absolutely times when we as Christians are to judge those around us, not in a mean or harsh way, but if they're falling to the wayside, if they're doing something that we know that is not right, it's not that we need to just judge them and not help them, but we are to help each other and let each other know when we know that the other one's doing something wrong to help them get back on track. So many Christians, even in the churches, 
will see somebody fall to the wayside, dip back into sin, and instead of going and knocking on their door and being compassionate and loving and telling them we love them, but we realize that they, you know, that they're doing this or that, um, we don't do that enough. We just let them go, and then they get deeper and deeper, and then and, and most of the time we don't even pray for them like we ought to. And let me say that there are times in the scripture when it says that we can judge those around us. Now, I'm not trying to act like, you know, I'm almighty or nothing like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about... Um, well, he tells us that right here in this next parable. I, can, I guess I can read that and then and then kind of touch on what I'm trying to tell y'all. But it says, um, and he spoke a parable to them. Can the blind lead the blind? So if he says that, if, he, if he's saying the blind leading the blind, I'll just go ahead and tell you. He tells us we're blind and we can't see when we're, when we're sinners and we're unsaved. So he's saying, can the unsaved lead the unsaved? No, they can't. And in a way, it's if the if we're saved, then we can lead someone that's not. In other words, the Holy Spirit helps us know right from wrong, and somebody that's not saved don't have the Holy Spirit to help them with that. So we are in a position to do that. But let's just go ahead. And he spoke a parable to them. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they both not fall into the ditch? A disciple is not above his teacher. But everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye? but do not perceive the plank in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove that speck that's in your eye when you yourself do not see the plank that is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will clearly will see clearly to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. Now notice, because so many people want to take this and say, judge, don't judge, don't judge, or you're going to be judged. But if you'll, if you'll really look at what he's saying here, he's saying that the blind can't lead the blind, and we're not blind if we're saved, okay? And he's also saying, first get the plank out of your own eye, then remove your brother's speck out of his eye. So he's not saying don't remove your brother's speck. He's saying make sure you're not doing the same thing before you go and try to give somebody else, teach somebody else something. Now, um, I hope that y'all understand what I'm trying to say here because, um, when we are saved and we love each other and we're brothers and sisters in Christ, we have a right to go to someone else and tell them, for one, if we have a beef with each other about something and that we need to get it right. And we also can help someone else and give them advice and be the teacher to the student. Um, and that's okay, and it shouldn't be considered judging when you know right from wrong. It's black and white. There's a right and there is a wrong. And that's what uh, so many people today look at Christians. If we say something, if we, if we say right out of the Word of God that God does not agree with something, then people say that we're judging. But if God says it, it's not us that's saying it. It's God and the Holy Spirit that lives in us. And so let's just get that straight. Now, I want to I want to read this next part because it's important too. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. 
Now look, this is all together in this same area. And he says, for every tree is known by its own fruit. So that's kind of like him saying, get the plank out of your eye before you remove somebody's speck. Um, because we are known by our fruits. So if we're doing something that we shouldn't be, it's going to come out and people are going to notice it, right? Uh, just like, I mean, I'm going to be real with y'all. When mama was going through all of that and me and Chris, oh my gosh, and there was so much going on in my life. I was so irritable and I was ill as a hornet and I, I just wasn't a very happy person to be around. Now, the last few weeks, I've just been joyous, but I wasn't that nice. And so was I bearing good fruit? Absolutely not. I wasn't bearing good fruit for my family or anybody around me. And, uh, but we do go through times in our life when we are hurt or we're, um, stressed. We got a lot on us and God knows that, but we never need to get to the point where we leave him out of the picture altogether and think we can handle everything ourselves. Cause when we do that, it just makes us more stressed. And I didn't look this commentary up or anything and study it, study, study it. I'm just trying to kind of tell you what I think because all of this is together. So he says a good tree does not bear uh, bad fruit and a bad tree doesn't bear good fruit for every tree is known by its own fruit for men do not gather figs from thorns nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil for out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Boy, this is chopped full. This whole section that we've read tonight, chopped full of scripture that we hear over and over and over that people use a lot. So let's put it all together and try to figure out why he said it all at one time, right? So he's letting us know. Let's just do like a little summary that we are not to judge. Um, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. And give, and it will given, be given to you. But the cool thing about this, and this is more about giving, is he tells us these, he tells us to judge not, condemn not, um, and forgive. Those three things, and then he tells us to give. But when he tells us to give, he don't just do it real short and sweet like the other three. He's, he, he goes on and says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your bosom. Bosom. I mean, that's a big deal. The bosom is like, like your gut, like your gut. You know, it's a big deal. So um, he's letting us know for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So if you help other people, then when it comes time for you to be helped, you're going to have help, okay? Um, I know there's a lot of people, and I might step on some toes right here, but there's a lot of people that will complain um, and say, and some people go, some of these are church members and some of them are not, but they'll say, you know, we were sick, and they didn't even come and see us, and we didn't get one card, and they didn't do this, and they didn't do that, and they didn't visit, and they didn't, and then you turn around, and you think, well, how many people have you made something to eat for? How many people have you visited in the hospital? How many people have you sent cards to? How many people have you done this and that and this for? Because think about it. Um, a lot of people that think that everybody's supposed to do all of this for them are the same people that never do anything for anybody else. They think about it. It probably crosses their mind, but they never really do it. 
Now, is it always that way? No, but I'm just saying, lots of times when we feel like we've been, you know, kind of left out in the cold, we need to take a checkup on ourselves, just like he's talking about the plank in our own eye, and see, you know, how many people really have we helped. So, give, and it's going to be given back. I've been preaching tonight, hadn't I? Lord, I, I might should have stayed in the living room. <laughs> but, um... I think of that sometimes because there are so many people that think that, you know, they're just supposed to be, they're, you know, I don't know, they're supposed to be catered to, and then they don't cater, cater to other people. Um, and I just, you know, it's something else. I need to uh, send out more cards than I do. I remember when I was a younger woman and I worked in the church more, I was a do, 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 do girl, you know. And I would send out a lot of cards for birthdays and anniversaries. And I, I just thought it was fun, you know. And I had a folder, and I kept them all neat, my little folder. I never missed anybody's birthday, and I never missed anybody's anniversary. Honey, I ain't done that in years. I need to I need to get back on it because those people are a blessing to others. Um, just do little things. Um, and when he says give, it doesn't just mean money, y'all. It means, I mean, you need to give and tithe, but... He's talking about your time, your love, just a simple phone call. It's amazing what just a simple phone call can do to help somebody that is has cancer. Um, I remember when I had cancer, and I will be real with y'all now. Uh, when I had cancer, there were very few people who called me. And um, I think... That a lot of people think, oh my gosh, they're just getting bombarded with all these calls. I'm sure, you know, they, you know, and you don't want to bother them. But there were many days that I sat lonely thinking that I was going to die. I mean, I really did at the time. And what a, just a simple phone call would have made in my day. So if you know somebody out there like that and you have their phone number or you can get their phone number, pick up the phone just and check on them and call them. Just something that little makes a difference. And, and that's the good fruit that we need to have as Christians, right? Um, so maybe after today, we'll all do something tomorrow that is a little different than what we normally do to try to give back, you know, and show God's love to somebody. How's that? Let's do that tomorrow. Um, I think I've preached enough. Lord have mercy. Y'all, um, tomorrow's thing, Lord have mercy, I'm worried. But I will say, the Family Food Fight sent some photos and some little video to us. They always send us stuff the day before you know, the show airs, and they're showing me crying, of course, but they also showed one photo where he and I, the guy that me and him have an altercation, kind of, um, they show one photo where we're hugging, and I just so hope, hope, hope they show that part, the fact that we had a hard time together, I mean, People need to put themselves in our position. Um, they, I'm a, I mean, it's not a secret. They all, everybody that's left, there's four families. And each of us are placed on a team with each other. So you're in the kitchen with three other people that you don't know and you don't know their style of cooking and you don't know anything. And so it was not an easy situation. And like I said, not before, I had been in the emergency room, and I had gotten back to the hotel at 2 o'clock, and then gotten up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I was exhausted. I was tired. I was, you know, it was just, my hair looked real good, though. <laughs> I told Chris, I said, I might be crying, but my hair sure is pretty. I think my hair's prettier than any show so far in the one that's showing tomorrow. So y'all watch me cry and get my feelings hurt, but we do make up. He and I both are Christians, and we both felt bad, and we, we both apologize to each other, and we both uh, we both love each other. 
you know, and we're Christians. And so uh, it was okay, but it just hurt my feelings so bad because I really believe that he said what he did mostly to win um, more than anything. I, I really do. And so it hurt my feelings that he would say that about me just to win. And I think that after it happened, it hurt his feelings. He thought about it, and his mother even said that he looked at her and said, I don't even want this, I don't want anything like this to happen. If I mean, you know, like he wanted to just go home if something, in other words, he hated it that he had hurt my feelings. Uh, but unless you're in that position, I mean, it's hard to judge. <laughs> um, so, but he and I both, um, were, you know, we were both at all. I mean, he was, he did a few things that he shouldn't have done. I did a few things, and I was more sensitive than I should have been. So it's going to be a fiasco tomorrow, and it's going to be entertaining for sure. So y'all get ready. And the cool thing about it is the team that loses, since it's got one of each family member, the family member has to cook to stay in the game, one person out of each team, which I thought was kind of mean. But um, y'all get to see um, one person on our team make a whole meal by themselves, which I would have loved to have done. I'll just go ahead and tell you I didn't get to. But um, because, you know, if you're in the kitchen by yourself, you're in control of everything, and it's really easy. You know how much salt is in something, and you know, you know, I mean, you're just in control, <laughs> and um, it was never that way with me on the show because we were always in the kitchen with somebody else, but y'all get to see it tomorrow and see who winds up in the kitchen, um, and it's going to be good, and the winning team wins refrigerators, so y'all tune in and watch it. Um, I guess we've talked enough, and I'm going to go back in here and sit with my beautiful man, my good-looking hug of a man. He's so handsome on that show. And, um, and yes, he has, you know, he's not, he's like May. Him and May both are so much alike. Me and Amy are so much alike. And he and May both can watch two or three things at one time, literally, in video format, and be doing something else at the same time, too. And me and Amy are just like, how do y'all do that? Like, we have to focus in. And they, they, they just, it's amazing. And they both can read really, really fast. I mean, like, like, really fast. But, um, and they're both, they both have pretty good photographic memories, too. But me and Amy have to apply to learn. And they can just read and retain. And there's just a difference in this. We're all smart. We're just smart in different ways, aren't we? I hope y'all had a good evening. I hope y'all have a good night. I hope y'all have a good day tomorrow. I hope that um, we all think about what Charles Stanley's talked about tonight and God has in his word about judging, about, um, about out of the heart the mouth speaketh, speaketh, um, about giving, and so y'all try tomorrow to think of somebody that's sick, and I know somebody right now that I haven't checked on that's actually my first cousin, and I'm not even checked on him, and I'm going to do that tomorrow. Um, my first cousin, his name is Derek Howard, for those of y'all that are local. Um, it's David and Peggy Howard's son. They, have, they only have one child. And he found out he had prostate cancer, and he has had surgery. And, uh, I mean, I know nothing crazy is going on because I have heard about the situation through somebody else, you know, like my brothers and stuff. But I need to actually personally give him a call, tell him I'm thinking about him and I love him, and praying for him. And so if you've got somebody in your life that you can think of, try to do that tomorrow. Um, and I guess that's it. Let's say our prayers and... Um, 
maybe the next time next time I come on here, I guess we could talk about my crazy night with Family Food Fight. Now, we always do a show, most of the time, we do an after the episode, and we do plan on going to watch it with my brother tomorrow. I dread it because I'm going to get embarrassed because he has people there. Um, but we will do it in the after the episode. So if y'all want to ask questions about what happens, then watch after the episode. It'll be on Facebook Live on Color Valley Cooks. Um, and it'll be me and Eddie and Chris, okay? So y'all can ask them questions too about the show because one of them gets to cook by herself. Um, so let's say our prayers, y'all. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word, mostly. For your son, who is the word, um, for in your word it says that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And we all know that word was Jesus Christ. And he was there in the beginning when you created the earth. And he was there when he was born of a virgin. And he was there when he died on that cross. And he was there when he rose from that grave. And thanks to him, we have eternal life. A life that's going to last forever. And we will never die. And it is just an amazing miracle blessing that you have gave us as a true gift. If we would all just receive it. May we all spend some time with you each and every day in your word so that you could speak with us. May we put your word in us so you can work through us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Bye, y'all. I love y'all. I'm going to go sit next to my man. Y'all have a good night, and um, I'll see y'all tomorrow after the show.